The goal of this video is to show how to use the vision sensor in Coppelia Sim. In Coppelia Sim, the vision sensor is essentially used to detect color. Color would be detected by RGB, the red, green, and blue uh, signal in the sensor. For that, we'll use the command read vision sensor. There are two modes for the vision sensor. There is a orthogonal projection type and perspective. We'll just stick with the orthogonal projection type. You can read more about these types or modes in this particular description. To start with, we'll create a block. Uh, we'll have it 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, let's call that box one. Now this box will give it a specific color so that we can then uh, use the sensor to detect the color. So here's the red box. Okay, I'm going to create another box by just copy this. So control C, control V, the box is on top of that. That's called box two. I'm going to move this box along the Y direction. And I'm going to give it a different color. Let's make this make this block box blue. Now that we have the box, now let's add the vision sensor. Vision sensor, uh, we just use the perspective type. And the sensor is buried here. So let's pull it out. I'm going to move it along the X, Y. Here's the sensor. It's kind of difficult to see it. So I'm going to make, uh, to increase its size. So I'll specify a size of 0 0.05. And here's the sensor. Uh, let's move it up along Z. Okay, now we can zoom and see the sensor. So the sensor sends out these rays. And these rays, basically, when they intersect a surface, they can basically identify the color of that surface. Now we can see that these rays are pointing upward. So we need to rotate the sensor so that they can uh, see these boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate about the global Y. So for that, I just go to rotate, uh, select the sensor, say 90 about Y. Now we can see that the sensor is facing the objects. We can move it slightly closer, that is along the X axis. Okay, this should be adequate. Okay, now that we have the vision sensor, we have the, uh, the two boxes. Uh, let's see how to write uh, write code to basically detect the box. So let's add code. Okay, the first thing we do is uh, we need to uh, create an object handle for the sensor, which I'll create in the initialization. So let's call that vision, the same dot get object. Uh, you write it as it is here. So V capital vision underscore sensor. And I want this to be a global variable because I will call this vision sensor in the sensing code. Okay. Now here I need code, which will take the data from the sensor. So for that, I go to the API and I search for uh, vision sensors. Okay, the key, the, the key command I'll be using here is uh, read vision sensor. So click on that. Uh, these are the synopsis of different ways you can call it in different languages. I'm using Python, so I'll take this. For now, let's just copy paste that. Okay, so now let's try to read what that uh, description says. So there's result. You can see the result is the detection state. It'll be zero or one. Zero if you can, if the sensor cannot see anything, one if it sees something. Uh, then there is auxiliary packets. Okay, it says that this auxiliary packet is the same as for the C function, which is here. 
aux values. So it basically stores 15 auxiliary values. Okay, uh, these are as follows: the minimum of these five, the maximum of these five, the average of these five. So what this really means is that let's take maximum of. So the sensor returns intensity, that's amount of light, the red, green, blue, and the depth. So it will give the maximum uh, of the red channel, maximum of the intensity, and so on. So what we'll do is we'll essentially play with the average. So for reference, I'm just going to copy this in my code. Okay, and I'll let me rearrange that. So uh, 15 auxiliary values. Okay. Uh, so minimum, so there are five of these. There are five of the maximums. And then there is five of the average. So that makes it five times five plus five plus five is 15. And that is stored in this auxiliary packet. Okay. And then this auxiliary packet too does something else which we're not interested in, so we'll just ignore it. Now this one should also take the vision sensor handle which we have defined to be vision. Okay, the next step is to actually read the auxiliary packet. So let's say, uh, we want to print the average red value. So for that, we need to count here to see what this index corresponds to. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th, 11. So that would be auxiliary packet 1, 11. So the average red is 11. So let's say print ABG red. And let's play this. And so it's giving 0.43. Uh, we can maybe move this slightly in front to see if that number changes. You can see that the number is increasing. So what actually is going on here? Okay, let's see if we can figure that out. So I'm going to stop this, uh, create this. I'm going to play with the views so that we have a, a better view of what's going on. So first thing what I'll do is I'll change the view to a top view. So top view, uh, we don't need this, I'll close this. Okay. Uh, here's a way in which we can create another view uh, corresponding to the earlier view we had. So say add, Floating view and then right click and say view selector and we want this view to be shown in the other window. Okay, so now you can see that uh, we have this view and the top view. Okay. So you can switch uh, by just clicking on that. So if you double click, it switches. Uh, let's just move this so that it is right the way we want it. Something like this. And like this. Okay, now we can switch. Okay, now the second thing I want to do is I want to actually see how this camera is viewing this object. And that will give me some idea of this. So what I'll do is I'll do the same trick here. I'll do add floating view. Uh, I'll click on vision sensor first, select that on the floating view, right click and say, associate view with the selected vision sensor. So now what you see is what this vision sensor is seeing. To confirm that, what I'll do is I'll play the animation, uh, select the move move button, and then move it along. Let's see, it's going to be the X. I'll move it along X. So you can see that it's actually giving you uh, this view. Now this looks like it's it's inverted. So what I need to do here is rotate about the uh, X axis. So I'll rotate by 90 degrees and this view will be fixed. So six, select the vision sensor, go to rotate about the X axis. Okay, it's done. Uh, now play this and you can see now you can see a better view of the box as if the vision, as if you're seeing it from the vision sensor. So this 0.43 is because not everything in view is 
uh, is actually uh, the red box. There's some blue and there's some background. That's why it's reading this value. You can actually change this uh, cone by doing the following. Double click on vision sensor. Uh, this thing is the cone you see there. I'm just going to change it to 20. And now it's clearly it's going to change this view, which you can see by just playing it. So you can see it's just seeing the red box now. So it turns out that the intensity for the red color here is 0. 0.568. Let's see what the blue and the uh, green is. Okay, so for that, I'm going to stop this, open my program. Uh, this is for red. The next one is green. The following one is uh, blue. So we can say print uh, average uh, green. Uh, you know what? Let me just put it in one single line so it's easier to see. So Average red, str, average red, plus space, str, average green, plus, plus str, average uh, blue. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, let me run this. So it's RG, it's going to print RGB value. Maybe I'll just put a uh, comma here. Let's run this. So you can see it's actually saying that um, the red is 0 0.56, uh, zero for the blue and zero for that. So it's actually reading only the red channel. Now, sometime it's advantageous to normalize this so that you, you get like one for red and one for for if it's in red and one for blue if it's in blue. So what we'll do is we we'll just we we'll just normalize this. So what I'll do is I'll create a variable average. It'll basically do SQRT um, average red times average red plus average blue times average blue plus average green times average green. So this is going to be my normalizing factor. And I'll create a new variable called uh, let's uh, let's call it this red. So that would be average red divided by average uh, blue will be average blue divided by blue average, and then a green would be average green divided by average. Okay, now with this we can uh, make it plot the normalized value or sorry, the print the normalized value. So that would be red, green, and blue. Okay, now we're ready to experiment with this. So I'll first click the vision sensor. I say play, so it's reading one, zero, zero. Let's move the vision sensor slightly behind, back along the x-axis, so let's move it away. As I move it away, it's still one, zero, zero. But now, as you can see in the view, uh, now you see some red and some black and, and, and the floor. So that's reflected in the normalized value. It's not fully red. So we can move it back here, back to one. And now what we'll do is we'll move it along the y-axis. So what you expect as you move on the y-axis is the color will change from red to blue. So here it is one, zero, zero. So let's move it. Uh, downwards. So here it's you can see it's between the boxes, but it's taking most of black. Let's keep moving down. Okay, here we have only blue and it's saying 001. The view you can see it's blue. And this is uh, basically it's doing its job of detecting the color. Now, if needed, you could also add graphs. I did that work beforehand. I'm just going to create a graph of red and the blue channel. Uh, I'm just going to copy from my notes. Okay, global 
graph. This is assuming that you've created a graph, so which I have not created, so I'll create that. All I need to do is say add a graph. This is the graph. So now this graph corresponds to that object, and then I've created a red and blue stream. Now I need to uh, assign the stream to this red and blue values. So what I'll do here is I'll use graph add stream value. Uh, so this is going to print the red and then the blue. So it's going to show it on a on a graph with red line being for red and blue line being for blue. So let's run this. So now you can see that the red is one, blue is zero. I'm going to move the sensor uh, in the y direction. Now you can see that right here, the red and blue is almost uh, half of what it was. And then when you go fully to blue, you see that the blue has spiked to one, the red has gone to zero. So this is another way you can visualize the results in a graph. 